Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Coach Schertz, if you would make an opening statement, then we'll open it to questions on this side of the room over here. Um, you know, obviously, congratulations, Seton Hall. That's a really good basketball team. Um, you know, they, they showed a lot of, you know, heart and fight and made a lot of plays there down the stretch to, um, you know, to, to win the game. Um, you know, we just... Uh, uh, so, so credit to them, very uh, deserving, uh, you know, champions. Um, our guys, um, you know, as they have all year, uh, you know, fought with everything they had, thought they, um, you know, gave it everything they had. Um, obviously, uh, heartbroken uh, locker room. Um, just, I think, you know, that's, that's the hard part of this is uh, to be great at something, you have to put your entire heart and soul into it. And, you know, when you come up short, it's, 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 uh, it's difficult. And that locker room, you know, is, is right there with the, the, you know, the team lost a national championship I was, I was on. And, you know, just guys, you know, sobbing and, and gutted because you have to put everything you have into it. And, you know, to be great at anything, you got to be willing to have your heart broken, and um, our, our hearts are, are certainly broken tonight. First question, Bob. Josh, Bob Kravitz with uh, Indy Monthly. What what did this run do for for the uh, university community and for the city of Terre Haute? I, I think it's you know um, what the, the journey these guys have brought on, the exposure uh, that they've given to. Uh, to, to our program, to Indiana State, to Terre Haute. Um, I don't think, um, you know, you could, you could do that and, you know, uh, you, you can never bottle it like what they've been able to, to, to do. I don't know if you could put a price tag on it. And um, our fans, you know, who have, uh, you know, been with us every step of the way, um, the, the, the energy in that building, I mean, they've just, you know, that, that, that relationship, that connection between community and team is – Real. These guys are, um, you know, I told them before the game, you know, in, in this era, you know, it's sad to say, but, you know, that group in that locker room is a throwback. Um, they, they're they a throwback to an era when things weren't transactional. You know, they, they, they care about, you know, each other. They enjoy being around each other. They, they play for each other. And, you know, that's, they, they play with a joy and a passion and a fight that's, that's rare. And it's, obviously captured, uh, you know, the attention of not just, you know, the community, but the country, and deservedly so, because um, you're not going to find a, a better locker room uh, and a better group than, than the one in that uh, that's sitting in there, you know, crying their eyes out tonight. Second row. Nicole, Christine, WTWO. Coach, those guys, I know they're gutted tonight, but they played their hearts out, like you said. What was your message to them, you know, in, in light of this, but also pushing them forward? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's nothing you can say uh, to, to alleviate, um, you know, how they feel. Um, you know, they're, they're devastated. Um, and, um, but I think they've shown uh, over and over again how resilient they are. And I told them, um, you know, if you can't end a season with a championship, um, this is exactly the type of locker room you want to end a season in where guys are, can't pick themselves off the floor. They're crying. Uh, guys are consoling each other. Um, and they're going to look back and have no regrets, right? Like there's going to be – it's not like we could have played any harder. Uh, could we have played better? Probably. Could I have coached better? Certainly. Could we have taken the air out of the ball more down the stretch? I mean, you know, maybe we got four pretty good looks. They didn't go in. Um, the guys who took them and the shots we got, I'll live with that all day. Um, but – that's if you're not finishing a season, hoisting a championship, and only two teams do that. You want as a, as a coach to be that locker room when you walk in and you see because that just how much guys care and, and how much uh, it means to them. And they'll when time gives them a chance to heal a little bit. Uh, no one will walk out of there this season with regrets about, hey, we, we could have given more, we could have done this, could have done that. We've given every we, – we emptied our tanks as a group. Second row. Coach Mark Bennett from the Tribune Star in Terre Haute. Um, you mentioned 
having to replay that last that last play over and over in your heads. Could you walk through that and picture those shots again? Uh, did you think you had the, the setup right on that? Yeah, you know, we really did. I mean, um, you know, we, we got to um, – you know, we got two pretty good looks. Uh, you know, Robbie's been been in money all year, and those those moments, he's as, as good a big shot maker. Um, you know, Isaiah's three in the corner, I thought was a good look, and Julian's wing three was a good look. Um, you know, they just didn't go in, and um, you know, uh, but the guys who took them, the quality of shot. You know, like I said, could we have maybe run some more time and and, and done that? You know, you know, I, I'll have to you know look at that and kind of review it. Um, but we had to, you know, we, we got, you know, we gave up two rebounds, offensive rebounds, gave a basket, fouled. Um, Dawes made a big three, and then, and then there, uh, Davis at the end made a, made a really tough move, but we didn't get a stop either the last four possessions. And so, um, you know, to, to close games, you got to do it on both ends, and we just, we just weren't quite, quite there. I don't think the, the shot selection was bad. I don't think anybody put forced anything. The last shot for Isaiah was a tough one. They did a good job. Dawes did a really good job. We didn't get a great piece of that screen, and they switched out and uh, and got a block there. And uh, we just weren't able to. Ryan got that prayer off at the end, but you know it was obviously about an inch and a half uh, too far to the the right. Yeah. Josh, I got to ask about the elephant in the room. What's the schedule look like for you in terms of dealing with your future? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously I'm not going to, you know, do anything, um, but it'll be in the next, um, you know, I'll certainly sit down and, and I'm going to probably not sleep tonight, but um, certainly try to have uh, a decision in the next, you know, by the weekend for sure uh, on, on what's going on and um, don't want to leave. You know, it's been a great run and I don't want to leave anybody uh, twisting in the wind any more than, than they've been. So um, I'll get to that. But tonight's, you know, not the time. That's why I didn't want to do it uh, in the season because it's too emotional. There's too many things pulling at you. I want to have a chance to decompress, turn my phone off, and uh, sit down and, and think about uh, what's best uh, for me. And certainly, um, you know, these guys are all have decisions to make as well. Third row. Uh, Josh, Colin Davies, WEHT in Evansville. Isaiah led the team in scoring tonight. How do you think he did in this game, reflecting on his year and this game coming in as a transfer from Southern Indiana? Well, the thing with Isaiah is, you know, again, it goes back to a throwback team. That guy's playing with a, a piece of loose cartilage floating in his knee, and he's playing with a completely torn lateral meniscus in his left knee as a complete tear. And he's been playing with a complete tear since early February. And in the era where, hey, you know, guys are skipping bowl games or not playing the NIT or whatever, like this dude put off surgery to be there for his team. And, and you know, like that, that's all you need to know about him. I mean, like the courage, the toughness um, to do that. He's not able to really practice. He just gets for the games. I mean, but he's playing through, you know, uh, that, that loose cartilage floating there, which happened in December. They wanted to do surgery, he wanted to wait. Um, and then, you know, the, the lateral meniscus tear happened in December. And, you know, he's, he's going to have to have surgery here uh, ASAP. Um, but that guy, his, his heart, his will, his toughness, um, you know, we went to him there in that last shot. Uh, again, Seton Hall did a good job of, of switching out. But I've got so much faith in him, you know, with his ability to make big shots. He made the huge one there at 74-70 to put us up seven. And, um, Man, an absolute warrior, an absolute warrior, great competitor, um, and, and a, an unbelievable human being. And then reflecting back on this run, what do you think that this does in the broader picture for the Missouri Valley Conference, beating all these power conference teams on the way? Well, I hope it, you know, shines light on the fact that, you know, the way the system is set up, um, you know, there's good teams. And you look at Missouri Valley, we're the ninth-ranked league in the country. And... Um, you know, when you look at it and, and, and you know, it just, it, it's, it's uh, I don't think it gets the respect nationally it deserves. And I hope this run sheds light on the fact of like how good uh, the teams are. Cause you know, we came in here and we played four straight high majors, um, you know, five, you count SMU go in the ACC. And, you know, the Missouri Valley prepared us for that. It wasn't like we were in over our heads and felt like, man, we, you know, we can't, you know, um, meet this level. And um, that's, that's playing in this league. 
uh, and, and, and the grind it puts you through, it's a gauntlet. And, uh, um, and I hope uh, when there's a team in Indiana State situation, um, I hope it's not us because that means we won the championship, but if there's a team in Indiana State situation where, man, you won 28 games in the ninth ranked league in the country, uh, you know, you've, you've been outright champions, you've shown uh, that you're capable of playing on that stage, um, that they would give more consideration. And then, you know, the typical what has happened where you go and grab a, you know, 18 and 15, you know, high major team that, um, you know, has kind of, you know, been about 500. And that's just kind of the way it's, it's gone. But I hope that this maybe shines some light and gives uh, uh, better opportunities to schools, all mid-major schools, but particularly Valley schools in the future. Okay, back in the fifth row. Coach Rick Simler from WTHI TV. It's been 45 years since the 78, 79 team. It's still talked about all the time in Terre Haute. You guys did a lot of things that that team did 45 years from now, four decades from now. What do you hope people talk about this team about? Well, I hope I'm alive to hear them talk about it. So uh, I hope that first, um, that'd, be, uh, that'd be good. Um, but uh, I, I hope they talk about, obviously, um, you know, what this group accomplished, but I hope they talk about who this group is, you know, because who they are is greater than what they've done, you know, and that's pretty impressive because they just won 32 games. But who they are as human beings, I think it trumps uh, you know, what they've accomplished in between the lines. And the way they've connected this community, the way they carry themselves, I told them in there, like, you know, all the success, all the notoriety, it hasn't changed them one bit. Like, they're, they're no different. The success has not moved them at all. I mean, they're, they're still the same great kids, come into work, humble, care about each other, treat people the right way, the way they sign for the kids after the games. I mean, the stuff they've done to connect back and, and, and that support that you saw tonight is a byproduct of how they've won, how they've played, but it's also a byproduct of how they've treated people and the way they've used their power, their platform. You know, when they when you have success and you get the opportunities these guys have had, um, the fact that they've still stayed humble, they treat people the right way, they're kind. You know, they take time, they make people. You know, it, it's it's so attractive when people use their power and platform for good, and these guys one through fifteen have done that. Any other questions on the Indiana State side? Go ahead. Coach Schertz, uh, Hunter Tickle, Tribune Star. You guys were really close to getting into the big dance, and then here tonight you guys get runner-up here in the NIT. Um, how much is the message to the guys just kind of like, there's not always a fairy tale ending? Well, I mean, you know, life's not always fair. You don't always get what you deserve. Um, you know, that's, that's a, a hard lesson of life. Sometimes you deserve something and, and it doesn't happen for you. And um, the key is not to allow uh, setbacks uh, to, to prevent you from, from opening up your heart again, like just because you, you go for something and you get your heart broken and, and it doesn't work doesn't mean that you don't try again. You know, that's, that's the key is to continue uh, to put yourself out there, to put yourself into it. And, I mean, we, we put everything we had in this season. Um, we had some heartbreaks. I mean, certainly the Drake game, uh, and the, you know, tonight, not getting in on Selection Sunday. Um, but that's where I think, like, you know, I told the guys in there, you know, I'm a better person for having gone on this journey with them. We always talk about, you know, what is the chase building in you, right? Like you're chasing these things. And it's really, you know, you get them or you don't, but it's like, what is, what is the chase building inside of you? And like in these guys, it built resilience and toughness and it built an ability to be uh, willingly and, 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 and gladly a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, for me, uh, I was just, I'm inspired by their resilience, their fortitude. I'm inspired by the way they handle success. I'm inspired by the way that they sacrifice and give up for each other. I'm inspired by um, the kind of teammates they are, the kind of human beings they are. Um, you know, I'm better as a man for having been a part of this team and this journey. Coach, thank you very much. Thank Wish you. you the best of luck. Appreciate it.